Hi friends, welcome to Conceptual Radiology. This is Dr. Mack. Today, let me highlight a few point about Conceptual Review of Radiology, the Game Changer book which was launched recently by CBS Publishers which I have authored. Now why do I call this as a Game Changer book for radiology preparation for your NEET PG or AIMS or PGI or JIPMER preparation? Is it just one more book in the already saturated market? You know, to add to the confusion that you already have as to what book to buy and what book to read from. The aim of this particular session today is to settle all your doubts and confusions regarding the correct approach to radiology and the book to be followed. Now, believe me, a lot of thought has gone into the process of designing and then writing this particular book. I remember the early days when we used to have long, long hours of discussion discussing as to what should be the sequence of chapters or the kind of language or the color scheme or the image sizes and such small things related to this particular book. And a result of all these discussions and interactions that we had amongst ourselves with the uh, publisher which had also had a huge experience in this particular you know points that the final result is what you see in front of you right now. Let me give you a small example. Now you open the book conceptual review of radiology and you come to the topic of contents that you have and you will find that it is a very systematically arranged list of topics there and in a very logical sequence. The book starts with a chapter of image based questions where you are introduced to around 100 you know images from different different modalities and all these questions believe it or not are those similar to those questions which have been very recently asked in your various entrance exams especially the over the past couple of years. Next you go to historicals in radiology various scientific you know contributions done by scientists, physicians, radiologists till date. Next you go to the basics of radiology which is general radiology and from this foundation that you have created now you jump on to systemic radiology. Now the topic of you know table of contents that I just mentioned was designed in a particular way to ensure what I call is an integrated radiology learning experience. Now what is that? Believe me though we treat radiology and we study it as a distinct subject, radiology should always be integrated with your other clinical science subjects like medicine, surgery, OBGY, pediatrics. So though we studied and if you have observed we have been discussing radiology in these sessions very commonly you will find me you know digressing to topics in medicine, surgery, you know pediatrics and other subjects because that is what is called as integrated learning and we wanted to make sure that when you are reading this particular book you can use this book for this integrated learning experience as well. Now let me give you an example. Now, suppose you are reading medicine and from a medicine book you are reading say congestive cardiac failure. You come to the book of conceptual review of radiology, you come to the table of contents in cardiac imaging you will have congestive cardiac failure. You go to that page and you can study all the imaging findings related to congestive cardiac failure, combine them with your medicine studies. This is what is called as integrated learning experience. Once and for all you have studied comprehensively congestive cardiac failure from all different aspects. Example, you are studying say perforation from surgery, you come to conceptual review of radiology, look at the table of contents, GI imaging, you will find a distinct you know topic, nemoperitoneum. You go to nemoperitoneum from conceptual review of radiology, study in detail in utmost depth all the imaging findings and approach which is required in such cases of nemoperitoneum. That is how you have done a comprehensive study of nemoperitoneum or perforation. This is what I call is integrated learning. Another important aspect as far as conceptual review of radiology is concerned is the images in this particular book. What is radiology without images? I think it is like listening to a movie on a radio set. Do we do that? No, it is not fun, isn't it? And therefore, when we discussed this project of this book, we decided to make these images the real hero of our book. And therefore, you will find that in all Throughout this particular book, there are at least 700 plus original large sized images which have been included so that you can have a good you know visual memory of what text is given on that particular 
page. This is unlike any other book, you'll find, you notice the difference once you open the book, you look at the image size, this is a full sized book as well. So for example, look at this page from Conceptual Review of Radiology. This is a page where we are discussing all the imaging findings uh, which are seen in a case of early pregnancy within the first few months. Here the image is very clearly showing you in the image that you can see there is a gestational sac. Inside the gestational sac you can see a round structure which is the yolk sac, the first structure to appear inside a gestational sac. Look besides it, there is another image that you can see where you can see two ring like structures inside that particular gestational sac. This is what is called as the double bleb sign of early pregnancy. Recently a question was asked the double bleb sign in early pregnancy is formed by what structures? The answer was one of them is the yolk sac, the other one is the amnion. That was the answer to that particular question and below it you can see a fetal pole you know fetus which is seen inside the gestational sac, the crown rump length has been measured and this is how the CRL or crown rump length measurement. Now let us look at a few image based questions in the first chapter of this book. The patient presented with fever and cough, look at this image, this was a recently asked question in one of your exams. They asked you what is the diagnosis, is it right upper lobe consolidation, right middle lobe consolidation, is it left upper lobe consolidation or lingular consolidation. A very you know specific and characteristic finding that you see here is that there is a small area of haziness which is seen in the right paracardiac area and if you watch carefully it is causing obscuration or blurring of the right heart border. This is a right paracardiac area, the lobe which is located here is the right middle lobe. So this is right middle lobe consolidation. Identify this fracture. Another recently asked question in one of your exams, look at the bones, try to identify first what bone is fractured. As you can see here, it is the distal third of radius which is fractured. Along with that, there is a separation of the distal radio ulna joint, the ulna has subluxated distally. So fracture of distal third of radius with dislocation of distal radio ulna joint, this is what is called as Galeazzi fracture, that is the answer. A neonate presented immediately after birth with bilious vomiting and this was a radiograph which was obtained, a very specific appearance, you can see two round oval lucencies in the abdomen, this is what is called as the characteristic double bubble sign which is seen in duodenal atresia, that is the answer to this particular question. Identify the fracture, this is a <coughs> wrist radiograph in ulnar deviation, so the wrist has been deviated towards the ulna like this and that is the reason why a particular bone is very well seen. If you look at the carpal bones carefully, you will find that the first bone in the proximal row, right, which is more or less an elongated appearing bone here has a fracture. This is a very typical scaphoid fracture. Remember that many times a scaphoid fracture is not identified in the early radiograph. The diagnosis is clinical. There is a point tenderness at the anatomical snuff box. If the clinical suspicion is strong, the hand is immobilized in a glass holding position in a cast and if required a follow up radiograph is done. The probability of detecting the fracture in a follow up radiograph is greater than the early immediate acute post traumatic radiograph. That is a specificity of scaphoid fracture. Now look at this, a 32, 32 year old female with a history of recurrent first trimester miscarriages undergoes hysterosalpingography and this is an image, again a recently asked question in your exam, a very specific appearance of the uterus which shows only one horn, one fallopian tube emerging through it. This is what is called as a unicornuate uterus. Friends, I welcome you to be a part of conceptual review of radiology family. Be a part of this family, get the extra competitive edge by going through this particular book. We are bringing along radpghub.com to you, we are bringing along conceptual radiology sessions for you. Let us rock radiology together. Thank you.